Come with us to Tokyo! As you know, we went to Japan, and this was our day in Tokyo. We visited some temples, we also went to some more modern places in Tokyo, saw all kinds of things. Including bare hands. Any of true bare hands. That's also known as a paw. Yeah, that's true. But before we get to the bare hands, just Paws. one... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Am I okay to keep going now? Yeah, no. you, yeah. Unpause. Got it. Uh, <laughs> before we get to our adventure, just wanted to share why we're starting this way and that you may see us pop up throughout the video just to be respectful of those around us and to uh, adhere to cultural norms. We just shot things a little bit differently. So now we're here ready to talk about it and share a beautiful day with you. So let's Fine. go see those bear paws. First thing we did was stop by Shibuya. <laughs> nice. Which is the coffee shop at the lobby of the hotel. Picked up some coffees as well as a cheesy caramelized onion waffle sandwich. It is a beautiful day in Tokyo. The weather is literal perfection right now. And uh, we're going somewhere special. Max, where, are we, where are we going? We're going to see the family. We're going to see the family. Max has arranged for Han to drift through the street right now. Yep, that's right. Just like featured in Fast and Furious 3 Tokyo Drift. And if we're lucky, we'll get to see Jason Statham murder him. Well, now hold on. Except for not really, because no one dies in the family. Yeah, Han is alive. Spoilers. You're suggesting that we're going to do a recreation of Han's fake death scene where Jason Statham thought he killed him, but Mr. Nobody helped use projection and holograms to fake the death of Han so that he could work under. Then, yes, we are going to do that. Oh That's my gosh. Wow. Tokyo really has it all. Yeah. Yes. Welcome to the Shibuya Scramble or the Shibuya Street Crossing. This is the world's busiest pedestrian street crossing with at a busy time around 2,000 people crossing the street every two minutes. It's happening. It's happening. Oh, it's happening. Han is on the way. Where is he? He's my fave. All right. Why are so, there, Max, why are there babies over there? I, you know, Molly, I don't know. There's a statue of babies and I cannot figure it out. I have no idea. Google couldn't help me either, I, but I also noticed it. There is a statue that we should look at though. Um, another icon of Shibuya outside of the street crossing is Hachiko, uh, which is little Hachi. Hachi is a dog that um, his owner was a professor and brought him here to Tokyo, 1924, and then unfortunately died in 1925. But while he was living, Hachi would meet him at Shibuya Station every day after work, and then continued to come to Shibuya Station every day for nine years after his death. Um, to meet his owner, waiting for him to return. So Haji got a. Uh, he, he, How are you doing this to me? <laughs> well, Haji became this symbol of loyalty and was really venerated um, by the Japanese community. And so now there's a statue of Haji, which is kind of like a meeting spot here at Shibuya and um, very famous here in this area. Bye, Hachi. We don't deserve dogs. We're watching these advertisements back at Shibuya at the Scramble and they are like 3D. They're wild. After meeting the goodest boy, we are headed to Harajuku, the home of fashion and street food. A natural combination. I'm so excited for snacks. We're also going to see a temple over there. Oh, that's exciting. And we're taking the uh, train to get there. Specifically, we're going to be taking the Yamanote line to get there. We're only one stop away. And the Yamanote line is one of the easiest train lines to navigate while you're here in Tokyo because it's just a big circle. When you pick, you will decide which direction you're going. But ultimately, if you miss your stop, you don't wait long enough, it'll come back around. We have made it to Harajuku and Takashita Street. This is the place to be. 
This is a street and a few side streets just full of cafes and street food and fashion boutiques and all kinds of things. I've seen some of the food on Instagram y'all and I am so excited. I can't even contain it. It looks like we're shopping for uh, gifts for Cronkinella. Look, yeah. pumpkin treats. Oh. Special snacks for dogs made in Japan and they're pumpkin. Wow. Wow. Is Cronk an extension of you? Find out soon. Yes. Several days later. Now we're gonna have pumpkin. Can you sit? Good job. Another experience you will have if you visit Japan is finding tons of little capsule toys. Now, when I say tons, I mean they are all over the place. I think I was underestimated when I shared this originally because now um, there's a habit of us pointing them out every time we see one. Uh, and they are quite literally on street corners, uh, outside every shop. And here is a whole building dedicated to capsule toys. So I think we should each find one that we like. They have a variety of items in them. We have some Pokemon, we've got some Sanrio characters, we've got uh, Legend of Zelda. There's a whole room of them. So I think we should find one we each like and then crack a capsule. I gotta decide which characters I want because there's so many. There's all these different animes. I found some Disney ones, like these little sleepy boy Winnie the Poohs. There's princess, oh, beautiful rings. I could win a beautiful ring. <gasps> a Buzz Lightyear one. Look at fancy Donald and Daisy this and Mickey Minnie. Like the Tokyo Disney uh, Hotel. Those are cute. There's, those are cute with Marie and Tank. These little storybooks. Oh, so oh man, there's Harry Potter ones, creatures, wands. I think I'm gonna, I think I gotta go Harry Potter. She has her capsule. What did I you get? I think I got the spider. <laughs> oh, <No>, good. <laughs> it's Aragog in there. Oh, wow, it is Aragog in I'm there. I'm not going to put them together right now so he can fit in my capsule. These multi pieces. He's That's a like multi a good toy. He's a yeah, good he's toy. Gonna build the boy. But I might play again. <laughs> you want bugles? Oh, my God. Just bugles. Bugles. I do like the food section. The food section is kind of cute. These are rings. Beautiful. That's a beautiful ring. Here is fruit <laughs> and it's all sitting on their butt with their little legs out. Here is meals all sitting. I've decided for my first one I wanted yeah. something truly bizarre. D yes. So I've made a call. <laughs> this is wild. I must know, what did you get? I've made the decision to get tempura with legs. And I got this tempura with legs. You got a tempura it, shrimp, it's it a, looks like. Oh, it looks like an asparagus. It's an, it's asparagus. an asparagus. <laughs> I got a little asparagus with legs. It's <laughs> just so weird. <laughs> well, I think we found what they have to at least try. That's a mammoth on a ring. Apparently it's a bunch of other Ice Age creatures, but uh, we're gonna be trying for that mammoth. Oh, it's in the ice. It's a mammoth. You got it? Let's go. Oh, that is beautiful. There we oh, are. Oh, yes. Hey, uh, you guys make a company with me? Oh, I'm I so happy for you. It's so sweet. Just put well, it doesn't, doesn't really. There we go. She's beautiful. <laughs> it didn't really fit on your mask. <laughs> I got to the knuckle. Always selected her second. I think they're stickers or they're just like cutie boy little shark guys. Like look, that one's dressed like a chicken. I don't know what it is. It might be a sticker, I can't tell. Oh, it's a little pouch. I got the shark with a baby shark wearing a shark. Wow. And it's like a little pouch. Sharkception. There's three sharks in one. Alan, what are you going for? Water activity Pokemon. I, mine, mine are all going to be Pokemon. I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a Pokemon mood. Hoping for either one of these, but either all of them are good. All right, let's see what we get. Little boys. We have Totodile. You got him. 
He's so cute. My luck is gonna run out at some point. I'm two for two, but this is so adorable. What cutie. You know he's on a light preserver. Ah, this is too cute. I'm gonna die. He's going for Chip and Dale. Or Clarice. You want Clarice or no, Chip or Dale? I'm, I'm good with either. Okay. Look at it comes in an acorn. Oh my gosh, the capsule's an acorn. That's cute. Crack the acorn. I love this capsule. That's so cute. Inside, it's their butts. <laughs> That's a best case scenario. <laughs> I got their butts that sticking is, out. That's literally best case scenario. <laughs> that's so good. That's so good. Oh, that's so good. Booties. It comes out so I can wear it as a little pinky ring. Yes, as you should. Or they can go in the top of the Display acorn. Display it proudly. Stick it out. <laughs> I think I'm, do, I'm, I'm torn between one of these two, but I think I'm gonna go with the sleepy. Okay. Sleepy, sleepy boys. I got Mew. Yeah. Three for three. Three for three today. Alan, let's go play the lottery. So happy. I'm gonna be so sleepy and cute. I'm gonna die. Oh my God. I don't know why I love this so much. Look at how freaking cute that is. Look at that cute little sleepy boy. All right, dreams are about to come true, y'all, because this spot has a rainbow grilled cheese sandwich and a rainbow cheese corn dog. I will eat a corn dog for this purpose only. Garlic butter potato rolls. I don't know. Let's eat them. Let's eat everything. We have placed our order at a little machine, which does have some English um, on it, uh, but it also had some Japanese, but, you know, figure it out. Um, uh, figured everything out, got ourselves a rainbow grilled cheese coming, these garlic butter potato rolls, and a rainbow cheese corn dog. I did want to note that it was cash only here. So lots of places in Tokyo, especially at the theme parks, we've been able to use cards, but there are going to be places where you need to use cash. So it's good to have some on hand, especially for small shops like this. And for the record, we got our cash in Tokyo Station, which is one of the train stations. The only machine that would work with our cards for some reason, 7-Eleven. So if your card has an issue, try a 7-Eleven. Oh. This is a dream I didn't know I had. I don't even know where to begin. It's like Lisa Frank's sandwich. It tastes like a pretty basic grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's cute as heck. And actually, I lied to you. It's not just a basic grilled cheese sandwich. There's some kind of like garlic situation going on in the cheese, which was a nice delight. I don't. I wonder if it was the yellow. Yeah, there's some kind of like garlicky deliciousness. I like it. <laughs> it looks like it's stacked colors, so all the pink was on top. Yeah, eat out the middle. <laughs> this feels sacrilegious. Yep, oh, there's oh, the green. green. <laughs> <laughs> is it good or is it just like a corn dog? Um, I haven't found a hot dog yet. Oh, I'd like it then. <laughs> <laughs> I saw garlic butter fried potatoes and I. I, I mean, come on. This was very yellow butter. That was crunchy. Crispity. Yo. <laughs> Good crunch on the fried potato. This tastes a little bit like movie theater butter. Ooh. Man, not super garlicky, a little bit of parsley. It's not the last potato we're gonna eat either. Very good. Something then caught our eye that we had to have. Over at Long Longer Longest, they boasted the longest spiralized potato in Japan, and I needed to eat it. For your tornado potato, you have three flavor options. They are barbecue, consomme, and soy sauce and butter. We have elected for the soy sauce and butter flavor. Our next food has been acquired, and if you think Halloween Horror Nights has twisted taters down, look at this bad boy. It's 
a the longest spiralized potato in Japan, 52 centimeters. Hold on, shall I stand next to it for scale? Yes, please. There's Alan. I can't even, there you go. It's like half of Alan and Alan's tall. <laughs> uh, there were three different flavors of the tater. There was barbecue, consomme, like beef broth or soy sauce and butter, which is what we got. We also got this 10 yen piece. It's got cheese inside of it. I've seen it on TikTok and it's got cheese. So I bought it because I cannot be tamed. Since 2023? Oh yeah, there it is, the 10 yen piece. <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> uh. oh. I don't know. Ooh. It's like a sweet bread. It's almost like a pancake in texture and flavor. A little bit of butter and cheese. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, as a connoisseur of the Twisted Tater at Halloween Horror Nights Universal, I do have to compare it to this one. The long potato, as it's called. Can I get one more from Oh, wow. They battered it and then fried it. I watched them do it like a hundred times. And it is given the crispiest exterior on these potatoes. Saltiness because of the soy sauce. This is delightful. <laughs> we did check out many of the boutiques. Harajuku is known for fashion, but a lot of those stores we were not able to film in. We were able to see some of these t-shirts though. We have found a shirt store that has all joke shirts, but they're in Japanese, so most people would have no idea what it says. Like, shut up, stupid. Or, I don't want to drink, but drink is calling me. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. I'm sorry that I'm over. <laughs> Tax evasion. Tax evasion. Parole. I'm not sassy, you're only stupid. <laughs> Annoying in a good way. Max, should we get these? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a suspicious person. Small devil. I want to marry I, a rich I, man. <laughs> I'm not bald. I was bald. <laughs> and then I like the ones that are just different snacks. Chicken. Meat bun. Ramen. Udon. Handsome man. Protruding teeth. <laughs> My face is a dangerous weapon. <laughs> Funny. Our next stop was the Tutti Fruity Candy Company for just a small little treat. We ordered a rainbow cotton candy and he's making it right in front of us. All the different colors, they're all, each color is a different flavor. We picked up a small cotton candy. Uh, every flavor is different, so you have to try them all. I'll start from the bottom though. You know? Will you? Uh, I'll start from the middle. <laughs> oh gosh. Mmm. That tastes like cotton candy. <laughs> I do like cotton candy. Is it melon? Is it very light in flavor? Yeah, I'm not getting a lot of the flavor. I'm mostly just getting cotton candy. I'd have to try another one to see if I can tell the difference, but. A strawberry. Yeah, maybe a little bit there. Oh God. Oh yeah, that one's kind of orangey. I think the green one's melon. Might like a, maybe like a blueberry. Oh, this is grape for sure. Yeah, oh, definitely grape. Oh my God, the bottom. <laughs> oh. Grape is not for me. Grape artificial, not good in any country. No, it's not good in a Pop Tart. Not and good. It's not good in cotton. Not candy. good in a Capri Sun. 
obviously this is ridiculous. Ooh, the orange is good. Mm -hmm. But like people were taking pictures of us carrying it down the street. Mm -hmm. But it's probably the best cotton candy I've ever had. It's very good. It's not and as sticky. You know what? I know it looks like a single serving, but I bet you could share it. <laughs> Maybe. Even grape is good in Japan. I think you lied to me. <laughs> Us? We would never. <laughs> Alan, don't you know grape is a great artificial flavor? We found that out by science. <laughs> Your science is wrong. <laughs> Crepes are one of the most popular street foods in Japan, and the place we went literally had 30 different varieties, different combinations of ice creams and sauces and toppings, and we picked two out. Well, the chaos winds munch away on some cotton candy. We got crepes. This is the creamery that has uh, cheesecake, strawberry, and banana with some, looks like ice cream and whipped cream. And then we have the chocolate chocolate, which is chocolate ice cream and whipped cream with chocolate sprinkles. I'm gonna eat this one. So are the fillings. That's so much whipped cream. Okay. You know what? We're gonna just lean into it. Mmm. Mmm. How are the strawberries always so fresh? It's so good. Ice cream is tasty. I'm gonna get a banana. Bananas are ripe and the cheesecake is excellent. You can get some of that crepe? I am. You know what, Max? I'm gonna get some of the crepe. You know what, maybe we just bite it. Yeah, just do it. Good? Mm. That's so good. Try the chocolate chocolate. Looks pretty simple inside. That whipped cream here, nuts. We've had it on a few different things and it's nuts. Uh huh. And that's just a good sweet treat. <laughs> Took a little detour off Takashita Street to come to somewhere that I think really encompasses everything that is Mammoth Club, and that's Anakuma Cafe, which means whole bear. Like, whole, like a hole in the wall and a bear. And that's because you order your coffees on a little touch screen, and then a bear paw hands it to you. You have to have no interaction with humans, just bears. The thing is, too, it's literally just this like, literal hole in the wall right here like it's like this little alcove where you have your trash can and your ordering station and a hole for the bear look at this look at this look at the barista <laughs> <laughs> Put it on top of his head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, no, thank you. Oh, I have so many questions about running a cafe. Prior to visiting, we learned that there were bios for every bear at this cafe, and we learned about all of them. Molly and I, the Chaos Twins, uh, got focused on two of them, Lou and Fu, also twins. From, From the Fu, is that your house? Wow. wow. Bulls, are Lou or Fu here? <laughs> <laughs> 
We went, we went shopping, and we got snacks, and now we're gonna go to the temple. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna sleep and eat fish. That sounds like a really good day. It's a good day. <laughs> Oh, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 but I did request the first anniversary sipper. So I got this, which I gotta say is the best souvenir sipper I've ever seen in my entire life. It's a pretty good iced latte too. That bear knows what it's doing. We liked our visit so much that we actually came back on one of our non-filming days, and this time we left a little postcard for the bears. After starting our day with food, fashion, capsule games, and bears, we've transitioned to Meiji Jingume. This is a Shinto shrine that is right behind the Harajuku train station. Now, this shrine is actually a little bit more recent. It was constructed in 1920, uh, in dedication to Emperor Meiji and his wife, Empress Shokin. Um, it was unfortunately destroyed during World War II and then reconstructed in 1958. So this is a bit more recent of a shrine, but absolutely stunning in the woods, surrounded by trees in Harajuku. Meiji Jingome was originally decided to be built after the Emperor's death in 1912 and a location was chosen of an iris garden where Emperor Meiji and Empress Shokin would frequently visit. Here we have barrels of sake wrapped in a straw that have been donated to Meiji Jingome in honor of the Emperor Meiji. And while there's a whole host of information here about these barrels of sake, one particular passage I want to read is in addition to stating our humble gratitude to all of the brewers who have graciously donated their sake, we also pray for the continuous prosperity for the sake brewing industry and all the other industries maintaining Japan's traditional culture. That's just such a nice sentiment. And if you take a closer look, and I'll just zoom in on one of these, you'll notice the iconography and names of the breweries that have donated the sake barrels here to Meiji Jingome. This gate is the biggest wooden tori of the Myojin style in all of Japan. Um, now, it did have to be rebuilt in 1975, but it is modeled both in form and size exactly after the original that was constructed in 1920 with the rest of the temple. Um, the material that was used to build this gate is hinoki, which is a uh, Japanese cypress. It's 1,500 years old from Mount Tendai Sen, Taiwan. Before entering the temple, it is considered respectful to wash both of your hands and the inside of your mouth before entering. Once inside, we donated to do another omakuji, which is a container full of numbered sticks, and you shake it until one comes out. You then take your number and get your fortune from the corresponding drawer. There we go. Mm. What does yours say? Mine says, even if you fail to keep up with others on your life's journey, do not fail to tread onward on your own rightful path. Oh, that's nice. Don't compare. Although some are slow, still we never fail to reach our goal if we hold within our hearts those thoughts of sincerity. 
while still reflecting the image of lofty mountains, water and streams strives to seek humbler levels as should these hearts of ours. Stay home. Now, Meiji Jingame is a more modern temple and it's still just so beautiful. I think what stands out to me so much about this space is that nearly two blocks away, it's a very modern street. You have Takashita Street and here it's so quiet and tranquil and so spread out. It's difficult to imagine that this tranquil space exists when just around the corner, it's very, very busy and chaotic. I also appreciate that at all the temples they have KitKat stops, like at Epcot, but it's for tourists oh, instead. Yeah. Please write down your prayers in a faithful spirit and respect of respect of devotion. Place a monetary offering along with your prayers. We have found a wall here where you can purchase a uh, small votive and write your prayers and what you're thankful for and what you wish for on it. So Alan, once again, in amazing writing wrote business prosperity happiness and good health we all signed it and wrote mammoth club and now we are going to hang it here uh leave a little mammoth club here in tokyo and send our wishes up looking at this is actually making me quite emotional i'm not a very religious person but just to see thousands of people written down their hopes and their prayers and their wishes and you see it in all different languages i've counted like 10 languages so far and it's just people wishing for happiness or uh, peace or love or good health or to cure family ailments. It's just one of those very humbling moments where you realize that we're just all the same. After a beautiful walk through the shrine, absolutely stunning, we are headed to an equally stunning subway station uh, to head back to our hotel to get ready for our dinner tonight. For dinner, we went to Gro Teppanyaki, which is a very small but very beautiful Teppanyaki Wagyu restaurant. Teppanyaki is where a chef will be cooking in front of you, where they'll be making the meat and the different vegetables right in front of your table. While Grove does offer some a la carte selections, we were reserved for a nine course meal featuring Wagyu beef. There are also a variety of wines and beverages to go alongside it, and I was so excited about this because one of my only requests when going to Tokyo was I wanted to eat street food and then I wanted to eat Wagyu. Our first course was Wagyu sushi, which was lightly seared thin Wagyu beef placed over a small bed of rice topped with some lemongrass and gold leaf. It was meat butter. It was so delicious. It melted in your mouth. I'm gonna cry thinking about it. It was just so decadent. Course two was a roast beef Wagyu with a roasted sweet potato and some mushrooms. Um, the mushrooms were served cold, which is kind of strange uh, when everything else was hot, but the sweet potato was amazing and that roast beef Wagyu, the Wagyu continues to hit. Also, these people next to me, we, we know them. They're my friends. It's not weird. The next course was named Urashima Taro, which is named after a folk tale in Japanese, which tells the story of Taro who after rescuing a turtle, was taken to a dragon palace in the turtle's gratitude. Uh, but when he decided to leave, he was gifted a chest and told to never open it. But when he arrived at home, he opened the chest and it released a lot of white smoke and it made him much older. It aged him. So the dish itself comes in a small container and it is filled with smoke. And when you open it, you are greeted with your dish. On the interior of the vessel, you had red snapper atop a bed of arugula. And there was a light sort of vinaigrette style sauce over top. Very smoky, counteracted with some citrus and the earthiness of that arugula. I thought it was a really complete dish and really enjoyed it. The next course was the Wagyu burger, which was a Wagyu patty. It had a delicious buttery bread, some cheese shredded on top, some, some aged Parmesan. <sighs> no, this was a burger I will think about for a long time. It was almost like a Wagyu meatball slider in a way, the texture of it, but it was so juicy, so decadent. The cheese was like nutty and the bread was buttery. This up until now was my favorite course. Our next course was the spiny lobster, which was served alongside the lobster's once home, also known as his shell. It was very buttery, served with an anchovy sauce that had a little bit of acidity and earthy flavor to it. I thought it was a very balanced dish. Listen, I know I've said before that I'm not a seafood guy. Japan has changed my mind. In Japan, I'm a seafood guy. 
Next up was a soup course, a miso soup course. There was one little piece of Wagyu down in the soup, which was a nice little treat, and there was a little citrus spritz over top of the miso. Nice and warm. And then it was time for course seven. The reason for the season. <laughs> the Wagyu beef. I will note that the meal comes with a sirloin, but you did have the option to upgrade your cut of meat, which we did to the Chateau Briand, which is the same thing as a filet mignon, it's just a bigger steak. And Alan was quick to point out that the chef, who again is cooking in front of us, was basting the meat in its own juices and fat. And then it was served to us perfectly medium rare. And it had a couple accompaniments. It had a garlic chip, it had some black pepper, and it had this magical little cube that we were told was soy sauce. And you would pick up a little bit of it with your chopsticks, which I could use now, by the way, and put it onto the steak and it would melt like magic. And then you'd put it in your mouth and it went like magic there too. And it was the best steak I've ever had in my entire life. Course eight, our final savory course was garlic rice. And when they served it, they poured a little bit of chicken stock around it and then also added some pickled plum, which was a really interesting combination of sour tart from the plum and then the savoriness from the stock and then of course, garlic. It was fantastic rice. There's not enough garlic in the world for me. Plus. The girl used chopsticks for rice, so I've grown quite a bit since that first ramen dinner in Japan. And lastly, for our dessert, we had a matcha green tea panna cotta, a combination that I would never think to make, but it was delicious. The panna cotta itself was very, very creamy and light, and the matcha added its distinctive flavor over top, and they melded together in a way that I thought was very refreshing uh, and incredibly light. I really enjoyed this. If I could make it, I would. This entire meal and the Wagyu in all of its forms was unbelievably amazing, and this was a little bit of a splurge meal for us, but it was still only about $100 per person, which if you compared that to what this meal would be like in New York or Los Angeles, far less money overall. I don't know what to say. Well, that was really good. I just see in the reflection my eyes are glazed over, but that's just out of joy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, every course, just better than the last. Yep. We then decided it was time for a nightcap and we hadn't had any sake yet, so we Googled and found a nearby sake bar. They had hundreds of different sakes and as someone who knows nothing about sake, I really enjoyed it. They actually brought out this mat they put on the table that had different flavor profiles. We talked with the server, let him know what flavors we generally like to drink, and then he picked out a couple of bottles for us to try. What we ended with were two very distinct kinds of sake. The first was very light and floral and very, very light on the palate. And the second was a little bit heavier. It tasted ever so lightly metallic, but not in a bad way. It was just almost akin to a, a light lager beer to an IPA. The sake bar wrapped up our day of filming in Tokyo, but we did make sure to schedule a few friendship non-filming days. However, we did eat some food on those days and had some fun adventures those days that we can't help but share. We went to a location called the Whiskey Library, which does require reservations to go, and it was filled with hundreds of whiskeys. And you might be thinking, behind a bar? No, like a literal library. Think Beauty and the Beast, but instead of books, whiskey, complete with ladder that you can roll across walls of whiskey. And it was filled with Japanese whiskey, which, in my opinion, is one of the most technically sound whiskeys ever made, I, and the most consistent in taste. It was awesome to be able to taste a wide profile of what they had to offer. If you enjoy whiskey and you are in Japan, in my opinion, this is a must stop. And much like the fine taste of the whiskey library, we then headed over to another fine establishment, McDonald's. I grabbed a set of the chicken nuggies, which I did find to be mostly the same in flavor profile, but packed a little bit tighter with meat, and a chocolate macaron, which wasn't Japanese, but it tasted good. And I nabbed the soy sauce burger, which that name is pretty accurate. It was a burger that had been marinated in soy sauce, so it had a distinct taste of soy. Pretty salty for me, but I didn't hate it. I got two burgers. The first had an egg on it, which I was very excited about. It basically was like fast food breakfast, but lunch, it was pretty good. I also got a Big Mac, because I had to know if my favorite McDonald's burger was the same overseas. 
I'm here to report it's not. The patty was much thinner than it is here, so I will give the Big Mac to the United States. I also had a strawberry macaron, which, much like Mac said, is not Japanese, but it was a fine cookie. And while the U.S. might get the Big Mac, they don't get the apple pie, which, as I say that, is distressing. Their apple pie was just better. Fresh, light, and not as sweet. We then visited Sensoji Temple, which is located in Asakusa, a district of Tokyo. This is a Buddhist temple, and it is the oldest temple in all of Tokyo. I don't think it can be overstated how absolutely beautiful these spaces are. This temple in particular, I was amazed by the detail in the ceiling. It was painted, and I'm just... How did they get up there to paint that when these buildings are so old? It, it literally doesn't compute in my brain. Uh, but these spaces are just absolutely stunning and I think an important part of visiting Japan. We then did a little shopping and got some street food. One of the street food booths that I particularly enjoyed was all about strawberries. So they had a variety of different strawberry beverages, which is my favorite fruit. I grabbed a strawberry beer, Alan grabbed a whiskey, and while these could have been really sickly artificial flavor, they weren't at all. They were light and refreshing with just a hint of crisp strawberry. Delightful. We also stopped at a place known for croffles, which were croissant waffles, which yes, that means you waffle a croissant. I grabbed a savory one with ham and cheese, Max grabbed a dessert one with Oreo, and, and Alan chose coffee soft serve, which was the best soft serve I've ever had. All three of these were delicious and one of the highlights of our street food journey. Our next stop was Purikura, or a photo booth. This is a little bit different than your normal Western photo booth because after going in and posing for a bunch of different pictures, then get a chance to decorate your photo, putting filters on it, stickers, uh, makeup if you want on your face. It is a very fun experience located in many of the arcades or their own buildings, and we did it a couple of times. Now we decorate. They are beautiful. This last one is especially nice. Uh, this one here? Uh, yeah. Oh, that one, yeah. These are so silly. Okay, we're good. Turn on that background. Yep. Yeah. I think you right should there. do stamp. There we go. Bears, Alan. Bears. There, in the corner. I can't really see him. <laughs> it's not my fault. Put him, put him higher. Yeah. Where did you do stamp? Right here. Oh. Yeah. And then my dreams came true. We went to get sushi in Japan. Not just any sushi, conveyor belt sushi. Not just any conveyor belt sushi, but also sushi that got delivered to me on a train. That's right, conveyor belt one way, train the other, bringing custom order sushi, but also conveyor belt when I could pick up new sushi that I hadn't tried before. I ate so much sushi. So very much sushi, and it was all so very good. And then I only paid $36 for all my sushi. I wish I'd eat more. And that was our day in Tokyo, and Tokyo was our final destination on our Japan trip. So before we go, let's all talk about some of our favorite things from Tokyo. Let's start with favorite food, but we can't all say the Wagyu, because I think it, Fair. It, there's no contest that that night it was cool. the best. Yeah, it was ugh, easily the best. So yeah. we'll blanket statement, that was number one for food, but maybe like favorite street food or other food that we had. I'm gonna go long potato. Ooh. I, it was indeed long, maybe maybe longer and longest. It was Ooh. longest potato. But we actually went back a couple times and tried different seasonings yeah. on it, and yeah. they were all bangers. Yeah. So, uh, so good. Yeah, the 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 pre coating of it and then frying yeah. really they did Amazing. something. They did something there. Um, I think I liked the ten yen bread, which mm. was from the same spot. But we actually saw it being sold a couple different places. The sweet bread plus all of that cheese were like a dream come true for me. And also, bonus shout out to the strawberry beer, because that was quite delicious. Sushi. Oh, sure. Sure. So much sushi. Yeah. All of the sushi. 
They even had Wagyu sushi there. Remember? Yeah. They did. I it was it. so big. I did like the little train that came. The, train, the train was yeah. very exciting. Um, we also had ramen and katsu oh, gosh, and ramen. tempura and just. I went into Japan not really sure what I would eat because I'm not super familiar with Japanese food and I made it my goal to come home with a new favorite food and I came home with two outside of like street food. Uh, one, katsu, which is like a pork cutlet that's been fried and it's delicious and two, ramen eggs. Very, Very specific. specific. <laughs> yeah, the ramen is good, but it's all it's about the, the eggs, eggs, baby. <laughs> Max and I eating noodles. Molly, can I have another egg, please? I literally <laughs> kept ordering just eggs. Yeah. Uh, okay, what about your favorite thing we did in Tokyo? Like, favorite place we went or activity? Ooh. How about you all kick us off? I have been before, okay. so for first time in Tokyo, what was your favorite thing we did? Well, for me... That, that particular event hasn't necessarily been shown yet, but oh. but uh, it'll be very clear when it does arrive. Wow. I understand. What a uh, tease. A tease. Yeah. I also enjoyed that particular event. Uh, <laughs> I what? also, I think that I will forever cherish our photo booth memories oh just because gosh. they were so silly and we were all just <laughs> laughing and like having a good time. Um, I think that I also really enjoyed the whole bear. Like, oh, Anakuma was great. It was just such a, like, distinctly Japanese experience yeah. and something unlike. It was just so sweet and simple and silly, and we were just in hysterics that it was, like, just one of my favorite memories is going to visit those little bears. Yeah. I'm going to skirt this question a little bit. So many of the places that we visited were places that I had been before, but it's so cool getting to share somewhere around the world with people that had not been and get to introduce you all to those spots. And so whether it was Sensoji or taking you to Harajuku for your first time or just navigating the trains, this whole experience of being in Tokyo, like it's a different lens, even though I had been to see it through new eyes and to get to like guide on that way. And I, I think my biggest takeaway whenever anybody's asked me about Japan since we've been back, and it doesn't matter if I'm talking about Tokyo, Kyoto, the theme parks, the people and oh, the culture yeah. is yeah. absolutely the biggest thing I'm taking <laughs> with me because everyone is so kind and thoughtful and respectful and wants to help you. And I was nervous about the language barrier and it didn't seem to matter because yeah. everyone there is just so willing to give of themselves to help their fellow human and it it also just watching people it, it reminds you that the world's pretty small it was one of those things where the table next to us at dinner would also be a group of friends and laughing and it's like we're having the same experience but we are live on two different sides of the world and like going to places like the temple and seeing everyone's prayers like the world's not that big and we are all kind of the same I've wanted to go to Japan for as long as I can remember. It's always been in my, my top two places to visit in the world, period. And checking that off the list, especially in the way that we did it, um, I I couldn't have asked for a better experience. I think it was incredible. It Not only did it live up to my expectations, it far exceeded them. And I'm just thrilled to have been able to experience it with my friends. And, um, and really get to engage in a culture that was just so welcoming uh, yeah it was great this is our last video from our Japan adventure and we just want to thank you for watching and being excited and for following along not only with this adventure but all of them because yeah. we wouldn't have gotten to go without all the incredible support of the man fam so thank you guys for watching we hope you've enjoyed following along with this series both in the theme parks and out we can't wait to go on more adventures and, and bring you with us thank you so much friends until next time be sure to like this video subscribe if you are new follow us on all of our socials and if you want to join in the conversation about this video or any of our other videos please join us on discord the links for all of that are down below and until next time, friends, I'm Molly. I'm Alan. And I'm Max. And it has been so magical. And we want to make sure you don't miss this one thing. With you, it's going forever, forever.